Hola, Commit Conf, how are you doing? <laughs> Thank you. I'm also on fire as usual, and I have the pleasure and honor to share with you my story of how I ported Doom to the browser with .NET and WebAssembly. So uh, before uh, uh, go going uh, further, let me present myself uh, quickly. So I'm Yassin Ben Abbas. I'm a DevRel, I'm a teacher, and I'm also a video game collector. Maybe that's why I'm talking about uh, porting a game, maybe. And they work uh, for Worldline. Uh, we are a, a big pay tech company. Uh, we have uh, sites all over the world. We have even in uh, Madrid and uh, Barcelona. So if you're interested, uh, you can uh, go to this link and uh, uh, look at our job uh, offers. OK, so as I told you, I will be telling my story, uh, how I uh, started from nothing to making Doom run on the browser. So my story starts with a prologue, which is WebAssembly, of course, which is the beginning of this adventure. Don't worry, I'll, I won't be using this font all the time. Otherwise, <laughs> 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 OK, what is WebAssembly, or WASM? Uh, it's a portable binary instruction format, which primarily, or the, the first uh, use, is to run on browsers. But it runs all, uh, elsewhere also as we'll see later, but uh, for, my, uh, for my work, the fact that it works on bra browsers is really interesting. And its uh, main selling points for browsers is that it's faster than JavaScript for compute intensive tasks, uh, like uh, uh, computer vision or this kind of stuff, algorithms that are compute intensive. And also, many programming languages compile to WASM. So it's uh, language agnostic. Uh, so here's how a WASM file looks like. So it's a binary format. We can't read it. Uh, but there are tools which allow to uh, make it more readable. Uh, it's a, it's a su uh, suite of tools called Wabbit, which allow to convert it into a human readable format. So this uh, shows that wa WASM binary is just a function that is exported to JavaScript in case of uh, browsers. And uh, it's called get universal number. And of course, the universal number is 42, as you can see here. Both these uh, formats are not uh, good for developers because we would like to write uh, with uh, powerful languages, high-level languages. So uh, that's not a really general use case of uh, programming uh, with WebAssembly. So this is how we do things usually. So you have your browser. So when you want to run WASM in your browser, uh, with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and you have modern languages or uh, languages that are compiled to WASM. In my case, it will be C Sharp, but uh, we have other languages. You compile it into WASM instead of compiling it into uh, your usual target. And then this WASM binary uh, that I showed earlier is uh, loaded by the JavaScript engine. So JavaScript and uh, the WASM uh, binary communicate together uh, they call each other to uh, do what we want to do. So this is a general use case in WASM in browsers. I just also want to quickly show this. It's not part of my work, but just to show the advances of WebAssembly and the power of WebAssembly, there is something called WASI, which allows WASM to run on the operating system without uh, requiring a browser. So it's a really powerful feature, and even uh, Docker uh, is interested by this. So uh, please take a look. OK, so going back on, uh, to the topic. So WASM on the browser. A lot of languages compile to WASM. And also, there is a JavaScript interoperability between WASM and uh, the JavaScript. Uh, so we can, this, this is when I started to think, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, ne never seen before, uh, like something other than JavaScript run natively on browsers. So a lot of ideas came into my mind. I needed to do something related to WASM. I started thinking what I need to do. I need to find a good idea, something that motivates me to uh, work on WebAssembly uh, on the browser. So that's when the story continues for chapter one, .NET and WebAssembly. So let me give a quick word on .NET. It's an open source cross-platform framework uh, uh, maintained by Microsoft. It works on Linux, Mac, Windows, uh, iOS, Android. You can make different types of applications, uh, s uh, servers, 
command line interfaces, mobile apps, but it lacked uh, browser support uh, until 2020 when uh, .NET 5 introduced uh, Blazor Wasm. So Blazor Wasm is a component-based framework similar to Angular, Vue, and React. So you have your HTML, CSS, and you instead of writing JavaScript or TypeScript, you write C# -sharp code. And the C# -sharp code is not transpiled to JavaScript. It's uh, run by a .NET runtime, which is compiled into WebAssembly. This means that it's really a new way of uh, doing things. And it allows .NET developers to keep using their existing code uh, to make client apps. So these Blazor apps, Blazor Wasm apps, run fully on the client. Of course, uh, .NET, its main language is C-sharp. I didn't mention it, but yeah, C-sharp is the main language for uh, .NET framework. So this is how a Razor component uh, looks like. Uh, you have some HTML uh, and uh, some uh, .NET code, C-sharp code. And there is some interaction between both with events and binding, as you see in other uh, uh, component-based uh, frameworks. And uh, this framework allows to make a counter that increments uh, a number. So you may ask, what, uh, where is the game here? There is no doom here. I just see a counter and the uh, numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, that's when the, an idea came into my mind. So Blazor Wasm is, is made to, ma to uh, develop component-based applications. But it can also be used as an entry point to execute .NET code from the browser. So my idea is to make a component which doesn't do anything useful uh, except running some code uh, on the browser uh, with, uh, with .NET uh, WebAssembly and WebAssembly. So, and what, what can be uh, useful to demonstrate, as you see here, and I told you that I'm a video game collector, let's port a .NET game. So my eyes were sparkling. When I saw all these features of WebAssembly, .NET, Blazor Wasm, I told myself I need to port a .NET game into the browser. Now, it's chapter two, the game I, that I chose. Uh, I will tell you about it. So first of all, let's define what is game porting. Uh, game porting consists of making a game run in platforms other than the original one. Uh, but the port, uh, the making it run by compiling it into the native, uh, into the new platform by changing the code or adapting it depending on the complexity of the game and the time allowed uh, to, to make the port. And making the game run through an emulator or virtual machine uh, on the new platform is not considered as porting. It's, a, it's another topic. And uh, before that the idea of porting came into my mind, uh, it for, for me personally, it was something that I thought it was very complex, very difficult, that required to know the game from A to Z, the intricacies of the game. But I was really mistaken. And thanks to this video of MVG, where he showed how to port uh, Heart of Darkness from PC to the original Xbox as a homebrew, uh, he was just showing how to change the, uh, the imports to make the libraries uh, that were used uh, compatible with the original Xbox. I told myself, well, that's not, uh, that's uh, not something really complex. We, everyone can do this, uh, porting a game. We just need to find a good game, a good source code, and uh, g g get to it. So yeah, this, uh, MVG, uh, this video from MVG is a great source of inspiration. Uh, I don't know if you know MVG here, or if you follow his YouTube channel. Really advise you, if you are curious about uh, video games, he's also a developer. For example, he developed a port of Shantai for uh, Switch. So I uh, really uh, encourage you to watch his videos if you're, if you're curious about this. So now that I decided to make a port, I decided to make a port of Doom. Doom is a game released in 1993. Everyone knows Doom here? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's one of the most successful first-person shooters. No one can contra contradict me on this. Uh, and DOS, disk operating system, does anyone, has anyone worked with DOS or not? OK, nice. Good. <laughs> so what makes Doom uh, uh, particularly interesting with regard to porting is that how it was uh, made, it, it was made with, uh, uh, as two parts, roughly speaking. 
you have the engine which handles the game logic. So how a character, um, how a frame, how to advance each frame. So when character movement, AI, enemy movement, the li life of characters, uh, how to uh, render a fra the the content of a frame also is handled by the engine. So it's 2D engine. Uh, there are no polygons, uh, no such thing. And also the engine handles the input output. So the the input of the user and also how to draw fra uh, the, the, the frame uh, uh, drawing and the uh, audio playback. And there is the other part, which is the what file, which is all the assets of the game. It means that if you want to port Doom, you just need to rewrite or port the engine into the target platform. That's as easy at, as it is, of course, relatively speaking. Uh, so Doom is portable by design. It's a game that is made portable by design. And in terms of ports, there are many, as you can see here. On the, the right side, you can see official ports uh, on retro game consoles. And they even ha happen to ha have some ports on the Nintendo platforms. It's just like I'm not uh, particularly a fan of Nintendo or not, but I happen to find uh, these ports. So <coughs> really, really great, uh, great games. And there are even more crazier ports, like as you can see here. <laughs> And we keep seeing every day more and more ports appearing. Uh, can even add like tens of slides about this. Maybe piano doom is a good thing to. It will motivate me to learn piano one day. <laughs> <laughs> and just to finish with this uh, small anecdote, do you recognize this person? Bill yes, Bill Gates himself uh, was uh, in the advertisement for Windows 95. So Doom was such a big game that uh, Bill Gates uh, was uh, present to use Doom as an operating system seller, if I may say so. So yeah, he was, uh, he was there for the advertisement. Yeah. Sorry? What map? Yeah. What map? I think it's level two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. So let's uh, so let's go back to the to the to to Doom uh, and the, uh, the porting uh, of Doom. So I didn't start I, I, as I told you I am porting Doom. So I started with uh, an existing source code of Doom, and the source code that I used is uh, Manage Doom. So Manage Doom is a .NET port of Doom which runs on desktops, which itself is based on the official source code of Doom from its software. Uh, just to be clear on the on the Manage Doom version, uh, at, at this time, at the time when I, when I started making the port, I, I, uh, the version one was only available, which uses a library called SFML, which handles input, uh, output, and uh, the, the display parts. And uh, currently, there is a V2, V2 sorry, which is uh, uh, the, the current version, which uses, uses another li library called Silk.net. But I will go back to this uh, later. So my work is based on Manage Doom uh, V1. So to summarize, its software released Doom for uh, the source code of Doom for Linux. Uh, the account Sinhu, if I pronounce cor correctly, developed a port called Manage Doom, with SF which relies on the library called SFML, which runs on desktops, but not on browsers. It, and it uses .NET. Huh? It's .NET library. Uh, it uses a .NET framework, sorry. And my contribution is to uh, develop managed, bla managed Doom Blazor, which uses the uh, Blazor framework to make this uh, .NET port of Doom run on browsers. So that's what I'll be talking in the next chapter about how I uh, made the port uh, in more details. So first of all, I uh, needed to define a strategy for porting. So the strategy was per pretty simple. First, make the app compile. So I forked the game. I commented everything that doesn't work and I ha until I get zero errors. You know, as developers, we don't like to see warnings, errors. So, so for warnings, it's simple. I hit them. I disabled them. So <laughs> <laughs> they were too much. So not the time. And then uh, when I get something that compiles, I implement to do's little by little by starting with the display part because we always want to see things uh, on screen. Optimizations are uh, for later. Of course, don't do this in production. 
And also, don't, I didn't waste time. Also, don't do this in production. I didn't waste time reading documentation of, the, of Doom because, as I said earlier, you don't need to port a game. You don't need to know all the intricacies of the game. If you, when you don't have the source code, you need to do this. It's called reverse engineering or just re-engineering of the game. But if you have a source code already available, just read what is necessary or what is uh, missing. And in my case, it was how the frame was uh, drawn on the screen, uh, which uh, uh, I had some hard time with. But uh, thanks to some documentation, I, I was able to, to deal with it. OK. And uh, this allowed me to get something working after uh, two weeks uh, as a side project. Uh, so it was really interesting to see how much efficient you can be with the modern technologies, the different uh, uh, possibilities that are made with WebAssembly and other different evolutions of the different frameworks. Um, so I started with this uh, uh, big picture. I gave a big picture of the current, uh, of the initial uh, managed Doom implementation in .NET. So it's full .NET game. I started with this. And Generally, any game is simply an infinite uh, while loop. It, it loops infinitely. And on each iteration, we advance a frame in the game. So a 60 FPS game, 60 frames per second game, you do this 60 times per second. What is done is you get the player input. We update the game state, as uh, said earlier. So the position of the enemies, the position of the player, the bullets, the environment, the health. All this information is updated for just one frame, one step. And then the result of this is a, some, a frame and some audio, which are rendered and played. In the case of Managed Doom, the, this line and these two lines are made uh, in uh, SFML. So thanks to SFML, uh, they're available. But this line is platform agnostic, if I may say so. It's just uh, algorithms and logic and uh, manipulating arrays for the most part. <coughs> In JavaScript, however, a game loop is different. Because in JavaScript, we can't afford to make an infinite while loop. Uh, we have another function, which is called request animation frame. So we keep the same code for an iteration, as you can see here. But instead of having an infinite while loop, uh, we use a method called uh, request <coughs> animation frame, which uh, requests the browser to provide uh, the next frame of the game in an optimized manner. For example, when you hide the tab, it won't uh, run again. So it's energy efficient, and it's optimized for browsers. So th that's the way to go in browsers in if you want to make a game, something like this. OK, so let me uh, draw this again with, the block, uh, with some blocks to give a better view of how it works. So we start with Manage Doom. So first of all, we have the for loop, as I said which uh, each iteration you get the input of the user. And then you update one frame of the game, or you compute one frame of the game, given a what file. And the result of this is some audio and, and uh, an image to be displayed by the SFML library on your screen. And this loops infinitely. Um, and all this in Manage Doom is done in C Sharp. And you may guess now which parts are already compatible with browsers and which parts need to be ported. And the answer is this. Come on. OK, that's it. <laughs> so uh, here is the current situation with Managed Doom. So the for loop is not available. We need to use request animation frame, as I said. And SFML is not available, so we need to port it. Hopefully, most of the game code is already platform agnostic. So this can be kept as it is. And this is after so my, some work, some experimentation, some failures, some successes. I got this uh, global architecture of my port. Uh, you see here request animation frame. And uh, for drawing the frame, we use the canvas, HTML canvas. And to play the audio, we use the JavaScript library called Audio Context. And uh, so you see here that there are now two realms, or two languages, or two, uh, two, uh, two, 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 yes, two realms. We have the JavaScript and C Sharp. And we need to communicate between each other. And hopefully, uh, fortunately, 
Uh, .NET provides such APIs, some APIs to make uh, the switch from JavaScript to C Sharp and to call uh, C Sharp from JavaScript and vice versa. So the name of the methods that you see here are, uh, are available from .NET 5 to .NET 7, but they are deprecated or there is another API which is better in .NET 7. I will uh, talk about it uh, uh, later. But that's what I had in my initial uh, port. Okay, now let's dip more, a little bit more uh, deeper and see some code. Chapter four. And when we talk about code, the screen needs to go darker, of course. <laughs> okay, so this is, as I said, the Blazor is a component-based framework. So I needed to have at least a component which serve uh, like as a backdoor, as an entry point to run my .NET code. So we have our canvas, which draws our pixels on, on screen. And here we have, so this is the canvas. And this is the initialization of the game object. Uh, so really uh, uh, nothing particular here. And here is, uh, we call JavaScript code from here. So this line calls a JavaScript function, which uh, fires the request animation frame uh, infinite loop. Okay. And this is the method that advances one frame in the game. As I said, this is about 70% of the code, which is uh, platform agnostic. And inside this method, there are, co there are two lines of code which call JavaScript to render the frame and play the audio. Uh, so, uh, as I said, I started by rendering the frame, so implementing the code that renders the frame. But to explain, it's better to start with the audio. So, let's first explain how, uh, uh, sorry, before this, let me show the game loop method, which uh, iterates infinitely. And for each iteration, we call uh, the update game state, the method that I showed earlier, this one. Okay, and it's this one. So this one is called uh, each, uh, for each frame, which calls C sharp to advance one frame. And this one then calls JavaScript to play some audio and to render a frame. So how audio is uh, played back? So just to Quick explanation, a nodule is just a wave, and to uh, store it in a computer, we need to, sam to take samples. It means that we uh, measure the value of the wave after each small interval or after each interval. This is called the sampling rate. So the Doom Engine, what it does at each frame, it generates samples with a sampling rate. So we have samples like this. So which uh, correspond to this. And these samples have a sampling frequency, which is the duration between two samples. We give this to JavaScript. So there is a C sharp to JavaScript call. And we, it will rebuild the audio wave, or it will build the audio wave given these two information. So that's how uh, audio is played uh, from the engine to the, uh, to the browser. So here's some code to explain uh, more. So this is the somewhere in the Doom Engine's audio model, really simplified the representation. When the audio uh, samples are ready, we call the JavaScript method. We provided the samples and the sample rate. And then we just uh, uh, launch this, execute this JavaScript method. Play sound, it's here. Uh, so which uh, is really I mean, uh, uh, state-of-the-art uh, audio context uh, implementation. Uh, we build uh, an audio channel. We copy the samples, we give the sample rate, and we play it. So pretty straightforward implementation. So this implementation is really slow uh, because I didn't find a way to copy efficiently this, the samples from C Sharp to JavaScript. Currently, there is a lot of work which is done, like converting to JSON, or I don't know. There is, there is a lot of memory and a lot of computation done here. It slows the game a little bit, but I'll try to work on it in my, uh, next, uh, my next steps. Now, this is the audio part. Now is the uh, image part, the frame part. Uh, so the, the Doom Engine generates frame data ready and readily available as a one-dimensional array. And uh, each pixel, so each element represents a pixel, a pixel's color. But not the RGB value directly, but 
it's an index to another array which, co which contains the color, which is called color indexing. A lot of retro games use this to reduce the memory footprint of the, of the games, but it limits the number of available colors. So there is no RGB value, but you need to fetch the, 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 the color from the palette. So, for example here, each pixel has a value between 0 and 3 because we, we have four color, uh, in, this, in this example we have a four color palette. So the first pixel, it's simple, it goes here, it's red because 0 is this color. But the other colors, uh, the other pixels, in which way they will go? Like this first or like this first? Well, it's, it's, it works like this for Doom. Yes, I was surprised also because when I started uh, doing my port, I laid the pixels from left to right and top to bottom and they got a really weird image. <laughs> a really weird image. I thought, oh, oh my God, what's this? It's modern art, so I don't know. <laughs> so this is how pixels are laid and this is thanks to the documentation of uh, SFML and Doom that I understood uh, how it works. Uh, so be careful, Doom uses color indexing, as I said, and image is built from top to bottom and left to right. And uh, another, another thing that I uh, need to be careful about is that before .NET 7, as I said, the, the way to pass the frame buffer to JavaScript in an optimized way, <coughs> without copying a lot of data and so on, is really uh, weird because you have your frame data with 12 pixels. Well, it's uh, bytes, huh? it's, so it's uh, 12 bytes. However, JavaScript, there is no byte. You have numbers, and the number is four bytes. So here is what happened and they were really surprised, is that I got this. So when I have 12 bytes array, I get a three numbers array. So I need to do a lot of bit shifting to uh, isolate each pixel apart uh, in, my, uh, in my rendering uh, algorithm. So four bytes in C-sharp, one number in JS, so lit some bit shifting is required. We love when we do bit shifting. Even to multiply by two, it's better to do it with bit shifting. No, I'm joking, don't do this. Uh, okay, so hopefully this is fixed in the later versions. Uh, the optimized way to, cop to uh, send the frame into JavaScript is uh, more straightforward. So here is some code. Uh, so uh, here in the, uh, the Doom Engine code, uh, we, once the frame is generated, the, the frame buffer and the colors, the color palette, we send this to JavaScript and we get, we get this. It's more simplified, it's much more, comp or a little bit more complex than this. Huh? So uh, what happens here, the, we'll show the, more, the most important things uh, right now. Okay, this is how to get uh, an item from the array. Okay, binding that one array. It's not really well documented. I had to delve into some GitHub repositories or some uh, tutor sorry, tutorials um, and hopefully, the new versions are much simpler. Than, uh, the newer interrupt uh, feature between .NET and Wasm uh, and uh, JavaScript, sorry, is uh, much simpler, but that's what I worked with. And uh, also here, you see the bit shifting here to is isolate the pixels. And you see here that I go from uh, top to bottom, then uh, left to right. And also to, once we get, is isolate the pixel, pixel uh, we need to, uh, get its color value, so uh, when we get the color from the color palette, we also need to isolate the RGB values to put them into the, into the canvas. And the last value, so that's why RGB, that's why we have uh, bit shifting, uh, and we put uh, 255 because there is no alpha in, uh, in canvas, the last component is alpha, there is no alpha, so it's always 255. So this is how a frame is built uh, in Okay, so what I learned uh, during this uh, port is that, so calling Blazor from JavaScript can be really, really fast when you use the correct uh, methods. Doesn't require copying, it's really, really fast. Uh, but it has problems, as you have seen, by uh, uh, f uh, grouping bytes into a single number. That's really rare, but uh, that's how it goes. And also the API was undocumented and uh, some of them were removed in uh, .NET 7. If favor on JS interrupt, they'll come back to it uh, later. And be careful when you write uh, on Blazor, when you write code in C-sharp, there's something that really slows the app. I'm reading the slide, huh? So, uh, 
extensive logging. Extensive logging from C Sharp slows the app because there is a, a back and forth between JavaScript and, and C Sharp. And also copying a big arrays in C Sharp was slow. I didn't test ag again uh, after the recent versions, but in .NET 5, it was really a performance killer. And in JavaScript, of course, request animation frame is the way to paste frames. And also one uh, also a thing to note is that when you have a game that has audio, you can't just open a tab or you, when you want to play audio on your page, you, you can't play audio as the page opens. You need first to use, uh, you need to have the user interact with your page before uh, the audio can run, can work. So be careful about this. It's to avoid spamming and uh, all this kind of stuff. So after all these explanations, let's rest a little bit and play some demo and to kill some demons also. Okay, let's go. So I hope it doesn't, yes. So I click here to enable the audio and Okay, sorry for your ears. Okay, let me just show you that it works. Yes, the music is not uh, implemented yet, yes. But at least you get the nice shouts of monster. Before you sleep, it's a good way to sleep. Maybe we reduce the sound. And since it's hot, let's bath into some acid pool. Even better, let's take a bath in an acid pool outside with the sun. Like this. It's badass, huh? Okay. So this is a game and... So... Yes, I heard you. Okay. <laughs> and just to show you just one last thing. Uh, network. Let me reload uh, the tab. Uh, how to reload... Uh, sorry, okay. Let me reload. Just to show you, uh, there is the WASM here we have the WASM uh, runtime, .NET runtime uh, compiled to WASM. And you have, so this is really <laughs> surprising when I saw it first time, you have DLL inside your browser. So they are everywhere right now. If you hate DLLs, they are inside your browser and they are <laughs> executed. <laughs> okay, now I can go back and continue. So, now, it's the epilogue, as each story needs to have an epilogue, next step and conclusions. First of all, I talked a lot about uh, .NET 7. So let me uh, have uh, some quick words about this. So in .NET 7, uh, Microsoft or .NET uh, framework uh, added the possibility to run uh, .NET code in the browser without relying on uh, Blazor components. So it's much more direct way and maybe this has in my, in my mind, I thought that this has to be the initial way of doing things. So now we just need to have a plain HTML. Uh, you put a canvas in the body, so no, comp no blazer, uh, no razor components anymore. And uh, here you have, uh, you load your .NET runtime that I showed earlier. Here you load it. Uh, and this will load your C Sharp code for you. If you want your C Sharp code to be loaded by the .NET uh, runtime, you just need to have in your code a partial class called main.js. Yeah, so C Sharp is very uh, specialized in adding a lot of uh, words before your, uh, your variable or your class name. Uh, so if you have to name it main.js. Uh, if you name it something else, it won't be detected by the runtime. Uh, and after that, you have classic setup code uh, and the update game state, which is exported to JavaScript. So it's quite similar to what I showed earlier but in a more simple way. And uh, in the JavaScript side, you have a plain JavaScript uh, here, which loads the .NET uh, here. We most especially, most particularly this line, it loads the, what has been exported in .NET. So that here in the game loop, uh, tack, come on. Okay. In the game loop, we can, uh, we can call it. So here we call the .NET function that has been exported here. And even frame rendering is simpler. So uh, s sending a frame buffer to JavaScript doesn't uh, have the grouping of the bytes into a number. So 
we still have to render from top to bottom, left to right, but no more bit shifting, at least to iso isolate pixels. So let me uh, show it in a, a shorter way to show you now how to call it from C sharp. B because as I said, this function is called from the C sharp uh, inside the update game state method to render the frame. So first of all, we need to uh, tell C sharp that we want to uh, call this function. So we first need to export it in JavaScript. And then we need to import it in C sharp. So this is the name of the method in, the, in JavaScript. And uh, this is the name that we will call it with on C sharp. Okay? And, and finally, in the update game st uh, somewhere in the update game state uh, algorithm, uh, we have a display method, which then just needs to call the render on JS method which will call this JS method, uh, JavaScript method, okay? So this is how uh, calling C Sharp, uh, sorry, JavaScript from C Sharp works in starting with .NET 7. Much more straightforward and very, very fast. In fact, I have a demo. I have a server, uh, so it's not in the internet. It's uh, on a local server. And they unlock the frame rate. So as you, uh, request animation frame runs at 60 FPS or as much, as fast as your display can go. So now it's 60 FPS. You can see here that the 60 FPS corresponds to 70, 17, 16 milliseconds per frame. And this is the duration of rendering a frame. So you see that we have still spare time to do other things. Here there is no audio yet. I didn't implement the audio part with .NET 7's new APIs. But you see that it runs pretty fast uh, in a modern computer on the browser. So these are my next steps then, given all this. Uh, before that, let me also share with you another possibility of making managed Doom work on browsers. So what I explained right now is uh, how I ported for by rewriting the drawing uh, part, the input part, and the audio part uh, by my own code, if I may say so. But there is uh, a new possibility is that managed Doom, as I said, in V2, uses silk.net. And silk.net, until very recently, is working on WASM support. This means that all the code that I made, uh, that I've written, maybe will be integrated directly in silk.net. We'll see. So that's something also to, to, to uh, follow and to, uh, and to watch. Uh, so yeah, really exciting uh, time to be a uh, uh, wasm.net or game developer. So really interesting uh, uh, things happening here. So to summarize, my next steps. Uh, in short term, uh, continue migration to JavaScript and to RAP. Uh, maybe add music support, but, the may but I'm thinking if I can add it now or maybe after updating my code to manage Doom v2, because as I told you, uh, I'm still based on manage Doom v1. And also experiment with uh, silk.net, uh, because it adds, uh, when it adds uh, WASM support. And my long-term wish is to make this code uh, an official contribution of, uh, of managed tool. And that's it, slides over. Thank you for your attention. What's, what's the, the, the deal with music? What's uh, the deal? Is it is, is harder to board for an, any reason? Uh, no, no, it's just that uh, uh, I didn't the, the, uh, try experiment with music yet. It's just that I didn't. Uh, and if you see my code, I just have one channel of audio. I just yeah. get one channel of audio. I didn't experiment yet or didn't test yet to see what happens with the other audio channels. Uh, because the music is in another channel, maybe. Yes, maybe uh, it's another channel, or maybe the version of Managed Doom that I used did not support music yet. Okay. So in the latest versions, they, uh, in the GitHub, you see that they checked music support. So maybe by, that's why I didn't uh, uh, say that I want to add music now, because maybe by switching to V2, maybe there will be music support directly from the, from the game engine. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey man, thanks for the talk. You're welcome. It was pretty instructive and that was pretty, pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, so uh, just two questions of, the, of curiosity. Uh, the first of, uh, of those. Uh, how did you figure out the resolution of the of the game, the drawing those pixels, the rows and goals that you had to write? 
That was the first one. I, I guess that was a standard. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that, that okay, yes. So yeah, yeah that's standard. It's, uh, I mean, if you go to uh, maybe Wikipedia or any documentation, even uh, do wikis, they say that the resolution is 320 by uh, 200. Okay, cool. And uh, have you thought about upscaling that uh, resolution, for instance? Uh, so if, uh, if I upscale, it means that I need to de delve, uh, de uh, dive de more into the Doom engine, you know. Uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, well, you could have more resolution on the on the game. Uh, I I seen ports doing that, and it looks pretty awesome. I, I mean, it's just uh, some food for thought. I mean. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, maybe you're right because with modern technologies of AI upscaling and so on, we can do it yeah. do it without diving into the code. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thanks for the... No, 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 problem, no problem at all. Uh, and again, uh, out of uh, curiosity again, uh, have you thought about uh, just uh, decoupling the code from C Sharp, uh, not C Sharp, but from the Blazor engine and just having the ones uh, generated, either from C Sharp or whatever, and having that file available for anyone to implement that was um, uh, functions into their own uh, port? Uh, 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 you mean that the... Yeah, I, the I, I, will, I will explain myself yeah. again. Uh, so basically you have that uh, the code the, uh, coupled with uh, .NET and the way .NET uh, does things and this is um, the Blazor uh, engine and that in the end generates a WASM uh, file and you use that file uh, from JavaScript, right? So, no, uh, uh, maybe let me explain again. So what happens is that the .NET runtime, so the, 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 exa the program that runs .NET code is the one is compiled to WASM. The Doom engine, uh, the my, co my C Sharp code, all is compiled into a DLL, as you have seen. Uh, ah, right, right, that's right, yeah. So this DLL can be, is cross cross-platform. Mm, mm. Okay, 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 I understand now, yeah. Okay, that's cool, that's cool, thank you. You're welcome, thanks for your question. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Do you have previous experience with, with assembly or it's your first project? With what? Uh, do you have previous ex experience with 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 assembly or do you have... Uh, it's my first experience. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> apart, uh, apart from the get universal number uh, <laughs> method. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, which characteristics would you recommend looking in a game for it to make a good port? To make a good port? Well, which from, from a game, like Doom is good f for, um, because it's, yes. it's very important in a lot of, of, of Places. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So, as I said, the MVG video is a very good source of inspiration how, how we make a port. Uh, in his, his video, it's like a sm small tutorial. We share his screen, and he, has, as I said, he compiled his program, and he fixes the errors one by one by just replacing imports. That's just what he did, you see. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a good source. Also, maybe video game development uh, in general, it's, it's good to know, you know, the, there is this loop when you get the input, the output. Um, that's what, basically, that's uh, really what you need to know. Some experience with ge game development and uh, watch uh, this video of game porting uh, should, should be enough. Also, you need to have a project that you want to, to like, a project that motivates you, you know, to work, af to do things af as a side project after work, you need to be also motivated. Uh, why did you choose Doom in the first place? In Sorry? Why did you choose Doom? Like the game for the yeah. sport? Yeah, because uh, if I remember correctly, one day I just was just looking at uh, .NET projects uh, on the internet. I found uh, Managed Doom because I was learning uh, C Sharp and .NET and uh, wanted to see what, uh, uh, what exists. And I found this game uh, by luck, this uh, source code in GitHub by luck. I, uh, you know, I cloned it, I tried it on my desktop and they kept it uh, in my mind. Uh, so I came back to it one day, <laughs> as you see. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, hi. hi. Um, when you finish this one, where, what will be your next game? Maybe Quake 2 or 3 <laughs> <laughs> or 1 or 4, which are all open source right now? 
uh, maybe my next project uh, is working on an emulator or something like this, to just to try with something else. Uh, maybe uh, yeah, something like this. Uh, uh, we'll see. We never know. You know, uh, it can come. Uh, you can never expect what uh, idea come to my mind. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hello. Um, Hi. W um, congratulations um, on the talk. It was. Thank I found it really Gracias. interesting. Uh, what was the uh, most challenging part uh, of all the porting, and uh, was it the research or uh, <coughs> language limitations or something? Uh, yes, good question. Was the lack of documentation yeah. on the interaction <coughs> between JavaScript and C Sharp? For me, this was the biggest challenge. It was As a new feature. Feature. So, sorry. Blazor was new, and there was so first of all, Blazor was new, and Blazor was not made for this initially. Blazor was made to <laughs> components, buttons, list of views, you know, like you do in Angular, React, or Vue.js. You know what I? Uh, what yeah. I mean? Okay. So it's not made to just to play with interaction between JS and .NET. So there was not a lot of documentation, and as I said, for example, the, the original port when I built it in .NET 7, I didn't compile. Some <laughs> things were removed, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and also rendering a frame because it's counterintuitive to uh, 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 lay pixels uh, in a different way. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Congrats on the talk. Uh, one question: Once you had this all working, did you try different combinations of uh, browsers and uh, Intel, IRM, you know, uh, architectures to see if there were differences in uh, performance or behavior? Between uh, w different browsers? You different mean? browsers and maybe even different uh, CPU architectures. Um, different CPU, ah, good question. So uh, that's, that's, a good, uh, that's a good suggestion. I didn't think about it. Uh, because um, I, I, didn't, I didn't think about it because for me, WASM is a cross-platform browser agnostic. But yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I will try it on my phone, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know that I tried it on an old computer, it worked. On a Mac OS, it worked, on Safari, uh, if I remember correctly. But yeah, yeah th thanks for the idea. Yeah. Maybe on RM or RISC-V, maybe it will work. <laughs> okay, muchas gracias. <laughs> <laughs>